What's up ghouls? It's Blaze and welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming for you guys a little story time video that I mentioned in my last video which was my Halloween decor haul. Um, so <laughs> basically, let me get cosy, hold on. I'll get a little cushion, get cosy, get comfy because it's story time. Um, yeah, so today's story time video is about how my neighbours hate me because I'm a witch. Quite simply, that is it. <laughs> so, um, I have lived in this apartment for about a year and a half now. Um, yeah, 18 months. Duh. Okay, I've lived in this apartment for about 18 months and I love it so, so much. This is definitely my favourite place I've ever lived. Um, but for some reason, the people here do not like me. So, to begin with, Jake and I are not bad neighbours. We don't play music very loud, we don't even have a speaker so we can play it loud even if we wanted to. Um, because we both work a lot, we're not really home during the day and when we are home we're tired from work so we get in, cook dinner, watch TV for like an hour or so, okay maybe a bit longer, watch TV till about half 10, 11 and then we're in bed. At the weekends we like we never really have people over if we're gonna like socialise we tend to go out and do that. Um, and then it's not like we'll get home wasted and make loads of noise, like we get in and go to sleep. Um, yeah, we're not loud people, we don't, um, like we live on the first floor, so um, it's not like we leave like rubbish outside our door or anything like that, like when we've got rubbish we take it downstairs. We don't have a car so we haven't like taken someone's parking spot or anything like that. I really don't know why the people in here don't like us but they don't. So the biggest reason I can think of is something to do with our appearance because that's the only other thing I can think of. We're not bad neighbours, we you know, will smile and we'll say hello if we see people. We'll, I don't know, we're not bad people so the only thing I can think of is that it's down to how we look. So Jake is a fairly normal looking guy, that sounds really bad, that sounds like I don't find him attractive. I do, he's very attractive, but he, in terms of like alternative dress, he's not really very alternative. He has a sleeve tattoo and he has more tattoos on the other arm, but that's about it. Most of the time he's usually wearing his work clothes anyway. So yeah, I feel <laughs> it's probably me. My outfits are very extra, my makeup is a lot. Um, I tend to wear like big platform shoes, fishnets, mini skirts, bralettes, like underwear is outerwear, very like fetish goth style, that's like my my thing, I love it, so I have a feeling that could be something to do with it. So, um, since we moved in we've not made friends with anyone in the building which is, I know it's the UK or England, South England definitely, it's not like you'd move in somewhere and become best friends with people and you know, chat to them all the time and whatever and I know it's different nowadays than it was years and years ago where you'd know all of the people on your street, you'd know their names and you'd know like their kids and stuff like that. Um, it's different for this generation but this is to the point where like I'll walk through the building to go down and out and like put the rubbish out or something and I'll see people and no one smiles, no one says hello. Um, we kind of just get blanked which is really strange because I know that other people in the building are friends. Um, for example there's a guy who lives at the end of our corridor and there was a couple who lived opposite us, they've since moved, but they, um, the guy at the end of the corridor was always going up to the couple's door, knocking on the door, asking to borrow DVDs and like they were hanging out and having barbecues together and so it's not that no one in this apartment block is friends, like they moved in after us and left before us and they still managed to make friends and stuff and they weren't alternative looking in the slightest so I have a feeling it could be something to do with it. So basically um, I am a witch, I practice witchcraft, I have done for at least five years um, but I've had an interest in it since I was about seven or eight years old. Um, I've always had books about witchcraft and always found little spells and rituals um, I don't even, like, how did I even come across that? I don't know. That's in a separate video. I have, like, a witchcraft tag and I have other videos on that. So if you're interested in the witchcraft side of things, um, I will link my other videos down below for you guys to check out. 
But yeah, so I'm a witch, I practice witchcraft, I do spells, I do rituals, and I do them in my apartment. Obviously, I live here, like, I practice spells here. So the most that they could have heard in terms of my spells, I'm quite a quiet person anyway, I'm quite softly spoken, I suppose, is the word. I'd never ever shout. Um, so I doubt they've actually heard that, but I tend to, when I'm getting into the the right mindset to spell cast, I tend to play, I have a few songs that I really, really like that get me in the zone. Um, one is Hecate by, oh, what is her name? Wendy Rule, um, so I'll link it below. And there's another one, that circle within a circle, I'll link that below too. My absolute favorite, they get me in the witchcraft zone. Um, yeah, so I'll play those, and I could play those maybe kind of loud, I don't know. The walls here are kind of thin, I mean, like, I can hear when my neighbour sneezes, so maybe it's that. But So they could have possibly heard these witchcrafty songs, which, if you're not familiar with witchcraft, um, I know it's a lot more accepted these days. However, some people still have a lot of fear about it. They think that we'll worship Satan, or we're evil people, or I don't know. People tend to be afraid of things they don't understand, so it could be to do with that. So they could have heard the music and been like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, so I had a doormat that was so cute. I'll insert a picture here because I have a picture of it. Um, so it says, oh god, I haven't seen it in forever. Um, a witch lives here, I think it says, and it's got like a little black cat on it. It's so cute. So there's a, I work in a shopping centre in Southampton. I'm just going to tell you guys because I'm not going to work there for much longer. Um, the Marlin Shopping Centre and there's a really cute shop called The Loft Ladder that sells loads and loads of like new age stuff, crystals, tarot cards and incense and everything cute and witchy you could think of. And they also sell some home decor. So they have these adorable doormats and they were about £10, and the lady in there is so cute, so she always gives me a discount. Um, so I got this mat for about £7 or £8, pounds, I think, um, and I loved it. I bought it when we first moved in here. I had, like, no money, but I saw it, and I was like, I have to have it. So it was like a little treat to myself, and I put it out straight away, and I was in love with it. It just instantly made me, I don't know, like, the corridor for our flat is really gross. Um, everyone's doors are really, really dark glossed colours like dark blue or dark green the walls are like an off-white beigey ugly colour and it's very it kind of looks like almost like a boarding school as if you had like dorm rooms or something but like a cheap one not nice um yeah so I really don't like the the corridor to our building like the front of the building is gorgeous the inside of my apartment is gorgeous but the actual like corridors and stuff are really ugly um so it made it feel a bit nicer and a bit more homely when i was walking up towards my front door which i feel everyone has the right to make the outside of their flat house whatever look nice i mean you'd put out a doormat that you like um yeah so i was in love with it and it was there for a good few months and everything was good and then um so there was one night where jake went to watch the boxing um, I say the boxing, <laughs> it was some big match, I know nothing about boxing, it was a few months ago. So he, um, I'd come home from work, it was on a Saturday, so I'd come home from work and the doormat was still there, whatever, came in, sat down, had dinner together and then Jake went out to go meet his friends and it was there when he went out. So I wasn't being loud or anything, I was in on my own so I just had the TV on, I was just watching horror films until he came home and he came home. I want to say one or two in the morning and he was drunk he goes where's the doormat and I was thinking oh my god like he's so drunk he can't even see the doormat and I come to the door and I'm like what are you on about and he's like the doormat is gone and I was like what so I look and the doormat is gone it's just vanished so between him leaving to go to the boxing and him coming home someone had stolen our doormat I didn't hear anyone take it but I was sat like literally in here watching TV. It's an open plan flat. So if anyone walks through the corridor, I tend to hear it. So I don't know what happened, but someone took the doormat. Um, so I was really like upset by it because there was no, 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 no anything. I thought, because I know there was a dog that lived opposite us, I thought maybe he'd like chewed it or ripped it or something and I would rather someone just come clean and say like I'm really sorry my dog's damaged the doormat I wouldn't even ask them for a replacement or anything I would just want to know 
what happened to my doormat but yeah so it was gone this sounds really really petty but it really annoyed me um so the next day i put a note up on the notice board downstairs we have like a community notice notice board um so people will say like well they'll pin letters up if it's been sent to the wrong address or um i don't know there's someone who's been trying to steal motorbikes recently so someone put a sign up to say like just be careful don't leave your bike here or lock it better whatever i don't know um, so I put a sign up to say that my doormat has gone missing, I didn't say it was stolen, I said it had gone missing and I said it was a housewarming present, which technically it was, but it was from myself. <laughs> um, I just put a brief description of the mat and just said that I'd really like it back and then put number 17. So that note got ripped down, um, Jake put it back up and then the next day the note was gone and my doormat was returned and I was like yes my doormat's back it wasn't marked or like ruined in any way so someone had literally just taken the doormat and then put it back which I thought was really really strange um but at this point I was just happy that someone had returned my doormat so I was happy I had it back so I left it out was all happy and then a couple months later the same thing happened again uh we opened the door one morning to go to work and the doormat's gone again so I rewrite the note, I put it back up on the notice board and it gets ripped down. I write another note, I put it up on the notice board and it gets ripped down. And then days go by and weeks go by and my doormat has not returned. And I'm so annoyed by this point that someone has just taken my doormat. And I know that it's nothing to do with it being damaged or anything like that because it happened before someone stole it and now they've stolen it again so I feel like someone is playing a practical joke on us at this point and it's not funny because it's it's theft like you've stolen my property and it's something that I really liked too so like I get maybe I don't know stupid stuff through the letterbox or I don't know like I get funny stuff but that this wasn't funny all that was left when my doormat was gone was a little like picture there was a label on the back of the doormat that had a picture of the doormat on it um and it was like tagged on so that had been pulled off and it was left with a rock holding that picture down like on our doorstep so someone has gone through the effort of taking the tag off putting a rock on it and taking the doormat so this is like malicious at this point um like it would have been a practical joke if they'd have returned it but we never got that doormat back so um a month or so later we got a note through the door i don't know where the note's gone and i'm really annoyed because it would have been so good to show you guys but basically it said um we know what happened to your witch i can't remember if they used the word witch or cat we found your cat doormat we found your doormat with the cat on it it's at number what number it was nine it's at number nine that was it that was the note um so it wasn't signed by anyone it just said it's at number nine so i found it when i came home and i was like wait i waited till jake came home and then he was like okay let's go down to number nine and go and ask for our doormat back i didn't want to go on my own because i was like if this is a trick or something like i'm really scared so we go down to number nine knock on the door and it's a guy who he's like a single guy like he well he, he's not single but he lives there just him he's must be like late 30s just a normal looking guy and he's completely clueless when we open the door we're like so we knock on the door and he opens it and he's like hi he's baffled as to why we're at his door um and i'm like hi um we got this note do you have our doormat and he looks down really confused he doesn't have a doormat and he's like i don't have a doormat and I was like, no, I know, someone says that you have our doormat. So we basically told him what happened. He was hella confused, had no idea what was going on and was like, I think someone's playing a joke on you. Um, and then he started to point out that the people who lived opposite us, so they live above him, they tend to smoke weed out of their like window. He can always smell it. They're quite a young couple. So he's like, maybe they're just like, I don't know, high, thought it was funny. Um, and turns out they're really good friends with the guy at the end of the corridor who he's also friends with and he's like I'll ask this guy see if he knows anything never heard back from him um, and he said oh is there anyone on your floor with a dog and I was like yeah the people opposite us have a dog well, maybe the dog just took it or something and I was like that's really weird for him to to say that 
like he must know they have a dog and then because when I said about the people opposite having a dog he went oh yeah the one with the funny paw and I said like, how would you even know that if you didn't know there was a dog on our floor so it was all a bit strange I to this day I don't think he had anything to do with it I think he knows what happened but he didn't personally do it I think it was the people upstairs playing a joke on us and then just decided to blame this poor guy downstairs he's probably mentioned to him to them that he could like smell their weed or I don't know but yeah so they blamed him and yeah we thought maybe because it, there's two blocks in our apartment we thought maybe um it had come from number nine on the other block so we went through to the other block we knocked on the door and it was a lady who didn't speak very good english she was so confused as to why we were there she was like i don't have your doormat i don't know why anyone would say i have your doormat and i said like we just we wanted to try this block just in case that's absolutely fine but what really annoyed me was that everybody in that freaking block had a cute doormat they had like doctor who ones and stripey ones and like all kind of cute shit and i was like why do they get nice doormats and ours get stolen so yeah um those people opposite us have since moved out and i put a new doormat down which was again like a spooky alternative one but i didn't like it and i got it really cheap it was on sale in pound world for 30p um and it was like a zombie enter if you dare and i put that out months and months ago and it's still there completely untouched so i have a feeling it was the people opposite us i was hoping when they moved out they would give our doormat back but no nope. like we checked the bins there's like a weird cupboard downstairs we checked that that doormat's just gone i have to get over it <laughs> so mad so yeah that is the story of how my neighbours hate me because I'm a witch. Yeah. If you have any um, any ideas as to why my doormat disappeared, then reappeared, then disappeared, then a note appeared, please <laughs> comment your theories down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think, especially as like an outsider's perspective. Thank you for listening to this story time video. I know it was rather long. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.